Yes, sir. We'd like to reserve some time for rebuttal. Two minutes would be it. Okay. You may proceed. Thank you. This case goes to the very heart of our democracy, um, basically the right of the people to propose legislation by initiative. And the ruling of the trial court in this matter, which basically found that the health care initiative ordinance was a conflict with the North Kent Charter and therefore invalid, is an error. And um, basically, if the court and this court affirms that decision, it will have a chilling effect on the North Kent residents in bringing future initiative actions um, um, before uh, the, the, in this matter. Now, one of the important um, facts in this case, and I think it's basically one of the things that is the seed of the trial court's decision in this matter, is that during basically what has happened, and the court, actually the trial court points it out on page <coughs> two of their judgment entry, is that North Canton passed a mirror um, ordinance, basically, um, to the health care initiative ordinance. And basically, I think that the court then built its whole case on a kind of theory of no harm, no foul, and therefore basically uh, came to the conclusions that they did that <coughs> the, this case was invalid. Well, when I read that, you know, our court is to consider only actual cases and controversy. And when I saw they passed your legislation, my question becomes, does that moot out this issue? And no. why would it not moot out this issue? It, it doesn't moot out this issue because of the fact of when the effective dates of the ordinance go into effect. Because when the ordinance that is the healthcare initiative ordinance basically was went, went into effect in December uh, 1st, basically of 2012, and because of the time frame in which you cannot uh, change compensation during a uh, elected official's uh, term, it would then actually go into effect on in 2000 in December 2013. However. Because of the fact that North Canton then came in and did a mirror image, and they did that in March of 2014, after all the controversy was brought forth and after that type of thing, it would not go into effect until the elected elections of 2015. So we have a gap of two years from January 1st of 14 until I'm sorry, January, until January 1st of. About a year and a half gap, basically, and that's what I can see. In the interim, have I, I thought I also read that they, they, even though they may claim they're entitled to it, the council of people and the part-time employees have said we're not going to take it. Mm -hmm. I guess that further raises in my mind, even though we have this delay in effective dates or the if in fact they are not taking it and have made that decision, what impact would that have on the news? I think because do we really now still have a controversy? I think we still do have a controversy and the controversy goes back to what health care benefits did they receive, paid health care benefits during that time frame that could be uh, have to or have to be repaid back to the city of North Canton. Um, because of the fact that um, the initiative went into effect when it did, as opposed to the new initiative. Okay, so any benefits paid in the interim that were received, if we, well, we, the, the lawsuit's not to recover any of that. It's part of our territory judgment, and I'm, I guess I'm wondering whether or not. It was part of our lawsuit in it. Yes, the initial part was a declaratory judgment action to determine whether or not the health care initiative ordinance was valid or not. So and you then, lose that and the rest of it went away. Yes, yeah, absolutely. That's correct. All right. I, I think that if the court had actually followed a logical argument in this matter and followed the appropriate case law, that uh, they should have found for the uh, health care initiative ordinance and that it was valid. And the reason why I say that is, it's almost like a syllogism, basically, because if you take Article 2, Section 1F of the Ohio Constitution, <coughs> it says, 
initiative and referendum powers are reserved to the people of each municipality in all questions which the municipality may now or hereafter be authorized by <coughs> law to control by legislative action. And you're reading from what? I'm re reading from Article 2, Section 1F of the Ohio Constitution, which is set forth in our brief. Well, so, to put this on, on a different because I think the Supreme Court of Ohio has addressed, addressed it on a different way. If the Constitution of the, of the State of Ohio sets compensation shall be made by the legislative authority of the State of Ohio, the Ohio General Assembly shall set the salaries of most of the people here in this room, of the judges, elected officials, per se, and themselves. And the Supreme Court has said, well, our Constitution says that's the requirement, you cannot overrule the Constitution by a simple referendum vote that you should no longer give health care to the Ohio General Assembly. If that is parallel, is not a city charter very similar to the Ohio Constitution because it presents a different framework apart from the statutory framework that is normally allowed for cities. And the city people of North Canton voted for that city charter. Is that not their constitution, and is that not why the Supreme Court rulings are, are on point and the trial court was right? No, I, I believe that those are two separate things, and I, and I do agree with you in the fact that the North Camp City Charter mm -hmm. is their quote-unquote constitution. And basically, and in their constitution, they can elect <coughs> or exclude certain benefits or not, they can, and in their referendum and our initiative portions, they can say, yes, and we exclude from the referendum rights of the uh, individuals of North Canton the, the right to address the issue of compensation. Okay, And that's where I think that that difference comes into effect, because they can tailor that to the needs of the people and, and put in what they want, and as opposed to the state of Ohio, which basically has, through their a legislative authority um, done up different. Is, I, I, I'm obviously, we do these analogies, we draw them to extremes. But does that not sort of say that in the charter then they have to say the, the legislative branch of our charter group can do this, but no one else can? In each and every one of all these clauses we go through the charter powers. When I read this, we seem to have that uh, legislative interpretation which has always come up. Mm -hmm. yeah. One says, it says, the power to grant this shall be to the council. They're going to set that. It doesn't say and nobody else can, but it seems to say they can. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say and by a referendum this can be changed. So we have this interpretation issue. It's a very straight statement. They can do it. Are there other places within the charter where they exclude referendum that it ever says and only we can do this? And that's kind of why I'm trying to find out what the entire document is. I think that that's an important point because in 2.01 of the charter, it basically says that North Kent provides all legislative powers of the municipality basically shall be vested in the uh, council. So basically, you know, at that point in time, if we take that to an extreme, then basically no referendum would be allowed, no initiative would be allowed under the North Kent charter because well, all of the legislative power is to them. But, but you can... Again, this is not an area I've dealt much with, so if I make an error, I feel free to point out. But they can do it, I think the other side talks about, that you could go to amend the ordinances. I mean, you can go in and ask to change those, but that's not forbidden. It's the method in which this was pursued, they seem to argue, was you've gone as an initiative that should have been an amendment to the charter because the citizens voted for the charter and said these were the authorities. And you distinguish Warner, but that case seems to be the closest one I've read so far. Why is could you have achieved the, what you wanted here by having filed an amendment to it? Would that have worked? Even though, not that you had to, but would that have been another way to achieve your goal? Yes, I mean, we could have done that. I, I believe that that is correct. That an amendment to the charter would have taken place, but that would have trans, you know, taken it out of the situation. We believe that the appellants have a concurrent legislative authority here to rule on there because because healthcare benefits are are basically. Um, set by ordinance. And as they're set by ordinance, basically under the um, state versus, excuse me, state X row versus uh, sharp versus hip uh, case, basically they, we can set things 
we can do things that are um, in conflict or repealing a legislative legislative uh, action, basically. So, I mean, there's still this law in that, that case basically says the electors of the municipality may, by the initiative, enact a measure conflicting with or repealing legislative previously passed by the municipal council so long as the subject is of the initiative ordinances was within the powers of the municipality to control um, by legislative procedure. So, I mean, that, that case is, should be the controlling case, not state X rel versus um, Werner. Um, versus Coons. And, and as the court pointed out, we did uh, distinguish that case and uh, basically believe that it is not applicable to this situation due, due to the distinguishments that we pointed out. We believe that there is no conflict with the, with the laws that, and basically that, um, that, the, that the people have a, a right to, to legislate in this matter. And, and pursuant to 507.1 of the, the charter, basically, the electors are allowed to do this under an initiative provision, and uh, we're asking the court to reverse the decision of the trial. Thank you. Thank you. On behalf of Apple, Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fox and I represent the Appalee City of North Canton. I want to start, Your Honor, with uh, perhaps maybe the change in direction here. This, uh, this argument of no harm, no foul, I, I actually don't recall that uh, in, in Appellant's brief. Now, I think he, the Appellant said that's tenor of the trial court's judgment entry that suggests that. Um, yes, Your Honor. Because the trial court in its entry notes this. Correct, and, and I believe that it, its holding is clear that it, it supports Warner v. Kuntz and a, a long line of, of authority uh, <coughs> following that. There's, there's approximately 65 years of, of Supreme Court cases um, about six years later. Uh, Lautz v. Uh, Dieffenbach uh, had the exact same scenario where there's an issue with the uh, Toledo Police Department where they wish to have an initiative ordinance setting salaries for the police department. And in a unanimous, pure curing opinion before the Supreme Court, they pointed right back to Warner v. Coots and, and, and state that you may not have an ordinance that conflicts with your charter. And since that time, there has been no negative opinions uh, regarding Warner v. Kuntz in uh, the, the Louts decision. In fact, there's a long line of Court of Appeals decisions that follow that same tenor, if you will, that even the legislative authority may not pass an ordinance that conflicts with chartering, and, and shortly thereafter, after uh, Kuntz was Reed v. Youngstown, where the legislative authority passed an ordinance that, that tried to set the retirement age for its city employees, uh, whereas its charter says that, that employees may serve uh, during times of, of good service. And the court found that exactly that. Here, the legislative authority enacted an ordinance that was uh, void uh, as, as it contradicted its charter, and, and the court held that the ordinance was void, uh, void at uh, an issue. Can you tell me what the procedural difference is, and the hurdles that have to be met between just uh, legislating by initiative? referendum versus changing the charter. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, they, they are very similar. It requires uh, signatures of 10% of your electors that voted in the last gubernatorial uh, election. The, the key, however, is advertising. Although council's required to publish that there's an initiative ordinance in, in, in a paper of local circulation, what's unique 
in a charter amendment is that uh, the, the clerk is required to send notice to every single resident stating that there is a proposed charter amendment. Okay, so it's a much more difficult. Yes, yes, Your Honor. Well, let me do this. If we accept the proposition that only the legislature has the authority to set this way, if we accept that proposition, and they decided I'm going to, we're going to pay the mayor two million dollars next year. Uh, they do this at the right before the next mayor or election. initiative petition similar to this that says no we're going to keep the mayor's salary at twenty thousand dollars or whatever the mayor's paid in. Your position would be if if it was done in this same mechanism then the mayor collects one million dollars. He'd be entitled to that pay and that until uh, council changed that or no I don't even know if they could change it. They couldn't change it retroactively once he took office. But that the only way then to change that would be by charter amendment. If if the voters wish to change change that yes indeed to change setting the salaries then indeed it'd have to be charter amendment. And that, so the mayor would get the million dollars a year or whatever. Indeed, indeed. Uh, however, a lot more people the mayor. <laughs> yes, Your Honor. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, however, the council is with uh, tenure, maybe short. <laughs> exactly that. But then it's it just the fact that all of a sudden the mayor is making a million dollars. Correct. Um, but that's and, what it takes. And that's the way the, the char think. charter set. And in the same way with the General Assembly, Your Honor, I know that there's been uh, talk of raises for our, our, our judges and our appellate judges <coughs> and so forth. And in the same note, you know, our, our, our revised code states that our General Assembly sets these no, things. Mr. Cypersky says that's all right. He says this, the Constitution of the United, of Ohio is set up differently and it's enabling of the legislature. How is it any different? I don't see the difference. Well, what, I see them as being very similar. I, I think they are very similar, uh, Your Honor. And in fact, it's our Constitution that provides home rule authority. Um, uh, section uh, 28 provides that municipalities may enact charters and may set ordinances that, <coughs> that may conflict with uh, the revised code and so long as it's something that, that can and should be controlled by local authority. And in these cases, submit that the salaries of your elected officials as well as your, your employees is something that should be set uh, locally. Now, uh, in a unique twist, uh, where appellants found not a single case that that contradicted or, or, or uh, was negative whatsoever with these Supreme Court cases, stating that if your charter states that council sets salaries and, and someone proposes an initiative to change those salaries, the Supreme Court says that is in complete contradiction to your charter and it's void, and it's void whether or not it was uh, passed by your General Assembly or in situations where it goes to the voters. It actually goes through a general election and the court finds if, if it contradicts your charter, it's for void ab initio, it's void from the start, it's as if it, it never existed. Now, because they could find not a single case, not one, to support their argument that there's this concurrent authority, appellants went to Texas, and um, I, I, I was dumbfounded because there's such a long line of cases that counter their argument that they went to Texas, and <coughs> in, of all places, Austin, Austin, Texas is what they're asking this court to look at as, I want to make sure I, I, I get this, this quote right, they said that consider Texas as the appropriate guidepost for Ohio courts 
because it's a state that shares judicial philosophy with Ohio. And, and North Canton argues that this court should not look to Austin, Texas, because that's the only place they found a, a decision that that's, um, perhaps supports their concurrent authority, and perhaps because the Glass decision in Texas, there there is a concurrent authority that they have a, uh, it's their civil service rules and their council rules that there's a civil service act that provides that there is this uh, uh, joint authority, concurrent authority between civil service and council in setting these things. But Your Honor, you know, Austin is, is uh, quite different from, from, from North Canton. And um, if, if the appellants have to go that far and ask this court to ignore 65 years of, of you know, unassailable Supreme Court authority for the provision that an ordinance that conflicts with your charter is void, that it appears that Judge Haas and Common Peace Court got this right. And um, if I may, just, just in closing, I wanted to point out um, one, one case that um, it, 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 it's not in my brief. It, it's simply because this court uh, had published it just recently and ironically. You filed notice of supplemental authority. Um, I, I did not, Your Honor. It was just. Okay. Um, well, uh, then I, I, I won't mention the, the, the case, but I'll, I'll simply uh, sum up that the, the trial court looked at Supreme Court authority in making its decision. It cited uh, Coons. That was, it appeared directly on, on point. Um, and I, I think it's, we don't want to step away without saying how important that is because the, the common police court overturned a, a, a decision by the electorate. And it, it you know, certainly didn't do that lightly, I believe. It, 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 the court felt the weight as this court would, would feel the weight in doing that. But you protect the charter when you show that that you follow the rules, that there are rules for initiative ordinance, there are rules for charter amendments, and if there's a mistake, if, if the initiative uh, circulators fail to do it properly, that North Canton residents can rest upon a uh, provision that their charter may not be amended without uh, their knowledge. So, um, respectfully, North Canton, ask that this court affirm the trial court's decision unless the court has any other questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. The Reed uh, versus uh, City of Youngstown case showed an actual controversy and conflict with the, act with the um, charter, basically, about regarding age 65 as the cutoff date as opposed to people that could stay on for good uh, service, basically, that type of thing. And so there was an actual conflict with the charter. In our case, it's not necessary to change the charter. Um, basically, the charter did not set the benefits. It was the legislature that set the benefits. Uh, we're not trying to take anything away from the legislature. We are saying that we have concurrent jurisdiction in this matter. And so that's where we're at. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, counsel. The matter's been submitted. You'll be advised in writing once we have reached our decision. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. The next case scheduled for argument is case number 14-216.